right, Josh, welcome back from Patagonia. We missed you so much. Oh, I've missed you guys. Have it you? is so good to be back and back on Java with Josh. Yeah. Um, so we always wonder who watches this. Mm-hmm. And after the last few months, we've had some technical difficulties. Um, Clay, if you're on, we figured it out, we think. It's Dave's fault. Um, but I think everybody who watched came into the office in the following week okay. because I got asked about it over and over and over about again. About the technical difficulties? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. good God. And uh, one thing that I wouldn't recommend after a, like, 30-hour travel day yeah. is having a live presentation to your clients and anyone else who watches out there on the internet. Who scheduled this? Who scheduled this? <laughs> who could it have been? Um, but it was an exciting time. Um, my wife and I did something we've never done uh, since we've had children. We left the children with my parents for almost two weeks. It was like 11 days, I think. Uh-huh. Um, something we've always wanted to do. We've always wanted to go to South America. And we've never been south of the equator and all that fun stuff. And so we had the option, we had the ability to go down to Argentina. And oh, wait. Argentina. It's how you pronounce it. Oh, is it? Lady That's Gaga? A, no, it's a Vita. It's Madonna. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's right. that's right. Uh, but we had the ability to go down to Argentina. And we spent a few days in Buenos Aires, mm-hmm. um, and which is a beautiful, big city. And I think my wife and I were expecting like um, old city like Rome and Paris and things like that. Uh, it's not. It's much more modern. Um, it's really, really a cool city. And in fact, I, I brought a picture back. Uh, this is like their most famous tourist attraction, which, Dave, do you have any idea what this is? Um, it looks like some really old religious buildings. It's a cemetery. Oh, that's actually really cool then. That is a cemetery. And this is, a, this is taken from a, um, a fast food restaurant that hovers above the cemetery. Oh, wow. Uh, but all of those are mausoleums. And it's called the Recoleta Cemetery. Um, and if you um, walk, we walk, we had the ability to walk through it and tour it. They're, these mausoleums are three, four stories tall. They're all, I mean, they're no bigger than this desk, but mm-hmm. they might have whole families and generations buried in there. It's fascinatingly gorgeous. Really it's cool. really, really was a cool thing. What was the name of the restaurant above the cemetery? It was one. It was kind of like their version of Shake Shack. Okay. I mean, it yeah. was. They That's, were all over, but it was in this mall next to the cemetery. And yeah. some tour book said, "Go out on the balcony outside yeah. this restaurant." And we didn't eat anything. We just went out and took that picture. So I got a, you know a shout out to my dad. He would say something cheesy like, "Was there a sign on the door that says people are dying to get in?" <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. Shout out to you, Cowboy Mike. Oh, that's really cool. Did you did you notice? Well, first of all, we're standing. I feel like our energy is better that we're standing now. Yeah. Uh, Brian put in a whole bunch of work into the office. I helped a little bit. I used tools, by the way. Um, but look at this. We replaced our owner retirement sign with this. How do you feel about that? Um, you know, the lighting <laughs> looks great. And <laughs> yesterday, I get a text from you that yeah. says, "Hey, try and wear the same outfit so we look funny." Yeah. And I did. You decided not to do laundry, so your you know your green shirt was dirty. Well, after like. I don't know, 19 years of marriage, Carla last night's like, you're doing your own laundry, David, I'm not doing it anymore, so I don't know how to do laundry, so I had to wear a clean shirt instead. <laughs> not really a true story, I just ran out of time, but that's awesome. So, um, but after we were in Buenos Aires, we flew down to Patagonia. We went to this little city called Bariloche. Mm-hmm. Um, not little, it's much bigger than I thought. And you know how, like, like there's these postcard-type views? Yes. Um, this is the view from our hotel room. <laughs> like every morning, this is what we saw. And it was out of this world. Uh, my wife made fun of me. She said, I kept using the word um, surreal. This is surreal. That was my word of the trip, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this, is, this was the lake outside our room. This is everywhere. Everywhere you turn, this is the views you had. Uh, if you go to the last picture here, this is us at the top of a mountain we hiked up. I did more hiking than I've ever imagined possible. Wow. We had a blast. It was stunningly gorgeous. Um, It was surreal, if you will. Surreal. It was uh, was a lot of fun, and it was exhausting. When we uh, picked up our kids from school yesterday, my daughter comes running out to my Mm. wife, and she buries her head in her stomach, and it was very sweet. Yeah. 
Um, Missy always jokes that when I come home from work, the kids are super excited to see me, and she never gets that, like, super excited to see her. And she got that yesterday. So she just had to leave them for 12 days. And That's all it took. So <laughs> That's cool, man. But it was good, and it's great to be back. Um, and that was the longest intro to Java with Josh story we've ever had. So if today, um, actually, I'm not going to say, t today is actually an important, there's a lot to cover. Um, but I'm not going to go into a lot of depth in today's Java with Josh because um, there's a lot of things that happen. I feel like whenever I leave, it's always Dave's fault. Mm -hmm. uh, you get used to that, Clay. But uh, whenever I seem to leave the office, we uh, the market seems to go to turmoil. Mm -hmm. And so last week was no exception. It was kind of kind of fun. But uh, um, we'll go through that a little bit today because there's a lot there's a lot going on out there right now. Yeah, but, perfect. Uh, before we do. The always fun topic of compliance. Anything we say today is not specific advice. It is meant to be purely informational. If you'd like specific advice, we're happy to give it to you. But uh, we ask that you talk to us one-on-one -on -one for information that is specific to you. Beautiful. Well said. And I think you probably want me to go into, like, what is Job with Josh? We're actually, this. I think this is one year. Brian, is this our 12th? I think this is our 12th episode. I believe it is. I think we started in May, in April last year. And, I mean, as a tease, we've got lots of big things coming. Oh, you have, yeah, you have no idea. Uh, so, again, as a recap, Java with Josh, for those of you that are new, welcome. Java with Josh is a monthly live video stream. The word live has been kind of um, on and off word lately, but we are live right now. And uh, Hey, we're almost 10 minutes into a show, and uh, we're five minutes in, I guess, but... Uh, we still, uh, we're still live here, so yeah. uh, that's a good news. Yeah, good news. So Java Josh, monthly live video stream where Josh will get on camera and uh, he will talk about a timely market update um, that is um, important for retirees and those soon to retire. And then, of course, we put the video replays up on YouTube so you can view them at your viewing pleasure. We have a comment here, Josh, from Mr. Pradeep. Um, yeah, it. Pradeep, I'm glad you noticed. Yes. It was intentional. And I don't wear this tie very often, um, and I had to go dig in the back of my closet today to find it. But yep. thank you for uh, for noticing. <laughs> um, in fact, Clay, who uh, was made the earlier comment, he actually he took that picture, I believe, or mm -hmm. uh, it was here as that picture was taken, which is always kind of funny. Yep. So always good times. Upcoming shows, mark your calendars. We have May 15th, June 12th. And I chose July 17th. Your calendar looked empty, Josh. You were gone. I had to make a split minute decision. I chose July 17th on there. I hope it works. If not, you got plenty of time to we'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure yeah. it out. Yep, exactly. Excellent. All right. Um, next, looks like you want me to show this. Giving you the confidence to make retirement the best part of your life. The more and more we talk about this, the more um, I think this was the best change we have ever made in our office as we change a mission statement. Um, it is so amazing to watch people go out and truly not just exist in retirement, but make it the part of their life that they've always been hoping for. And uh, I think it's so cool to have whatever small part in that that we have in our office. It, it makes makes me feel really good inside and i hope it makes the rest of our office feel good inside too so you come back from it. vacation you're all sentimental i like it yeah you know <laughs> it was a good vacation and it was nice to nice to kind of unwind a little bit mm -hmm. and you know you get a little you have that much time on an airplane and just sitting around and you've got uh you get time to think you miss so. me a lot too i missed everybody yeah you, know, you kind of you know it was great for my wife and i to spend that much time together mm -hmm. uh, it was good for my kids to spend that time with my parents um sure but it's always good uh <laughs> it's always good to be back oh so. you finished your coffee i was gonna do i'm gonna do our our ode to brew point coffee i, I right poured it street. in here i poured it in my cup awesome brew point love you okay should we get started because this is like one of our podcasts we're 11 minutes in and we haven't really we haven't really talked about the juicy stuff, the good stuff. We have not. So you ready uh, to get going? Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's uh, let's break into it here. Okay. And um, I want to start, as always, reminding you that as we look out here onto the own your retirement planning process, that it is truly a process that incorporates everything. You can't have one without the other. Mostly on these job with Josh's, we are talking about this investments and wealth protection area. 
And uh, we're going to continue to talk about that today. But it does go hand in hand here. You can't just talk about the investments. You have to understand where income's coming from in tax planning and health care and long-term care. So um, that is something that we'll make sure we always start every job with Josh with. Now, as we talk about the investments, the first quarter that we just finished was the best first quarter we've had in the last five years. Um, the 2023 was a good market year. Um, you know, 2022 was down. We had a lot of good news in 2023. Um, 2024 kind of started because, or kind of, kind of, uh, just followed on the footsteps of 2023. They were expecting primarily because they thought inflation was going away, and that meant that the Fed was going to start lowering the rates. If you remember, a lot of this market uh, bump up occurred after the Fed paused their rate increases. And up until this point, um, the market has pretty much anticipated about six rate cuts for the year. And you can see what the, the market did over here in quarter one of 2024. Now, I left, what, April 4th or 5th, so just a few days into the, into the new quarter, and um, the market did this. Yeah. Well, oh, ha, forgot about this. <laughs> This is kind of funny. Um, I have showed this slide over and over and over again. And this slide is talking about market volatility. And market volatility, especially in presidential years. So um, Dave, you can come back over to me here. We have been anticipating market volatility during presidential election years. The market, when, it, when we get uncertainty, uncertainty drives market volatility. And presidential election years historically are volatile. Um, but following presidential years, historically, they're usually very good. Now, we also want to say that it doesn't really matter who's president, and we don't want to make decisions based on who's president, but the volatility is expected as we go into presidential years. And last week was the start of that. Last week, we had all sorts of, there's not much on that screen here. You just saw that uh, I was changing the, um, changing the uh, the good news from the first quarter, um, we saw all sorts of things occur. We saw inflation numbers not really be where we wanted them to be. So um, inflation hit a low about 3% last June, and it's been slowly creeping up ever since then. We hit inflation numbers of 3 um, again, 3% last June, and last um, week when we got the inflation numbers, they were much higher than the, than the Fed had anticipated. And that has some negative impacts for, um, for what we expect into the future. On top of that, we saw the um, Iran response and Israel's subsequent um, blockage of the attack on, um, on Israel. And that added to uncertainty, especially around oil prices. So let's get into that a little bit here. I want you to look at our inflation numbers. And these inflation numbers start back here if we look in January of 2021. And inflation got really, really out of control. Now, there's two, there's two lines here, and this is just technical how they do this. Um, the dark blue line considers all the items in the consumer price index. And the dotted line takes out food and energy, which are two of the more volatile numbers as it comes in. So those, those have more fluctuation. But we saw a huge spike in inflation, and this is what scared us. Inflation went uh, over up to around 9%. Um, and that is when that number here, if we go backwards and look, this number right here, this is right here. So this number in April corresponds to the start of when the Fed started raising rates. And the rates went from near zero all the way up to oh, about 5.5%. And that 5.5% was last summer. And if you remember um, what happened to then as we raised rates, that has a negative impact on the market. That, has a, that caught, makes everything more expensive. Now, the reason you make everything more expensive is to slow inflation. Um, and what happened was, if you remember, as inflation started to slow, and again, this was last summer right here, right around 3%, the Fed then subsequently 
paused. And this pause that we see here is what triggered that good market news at the end of last year. And if you look here, starting into this year, the market expectations for what the Fed was going to do were these dark blue lines. And it expected by the end of 2024 to see about six decreases. The, um, the Federal Reserve meets monthly, and they expected the, the Federal Reserve to decrease rates six times. That should have a positive impact on the market. Um, well, when we start to get inflation numbers that look like this, where we pump back high and then we went low, but this is our last few months here. In fact, the end of last um, week was a little over three and a half percent. This problem, what this, uh, what this does is this makes the market nervous. It makes the market scared. Now, a lot of this increase has to do with, um, with oil and gas. And that has been much higher than usual. And when you add into the conflict in Israel uh, and Iran and all the stuff happening in the Middle East, that they worry about all those inflation numbers. So now they're actually only marking in about two, these new purple line is or new expectations, two to three rate decreases. Um, but even that uncertainty can become a little... Um, a little unknown. In fact, Jamie Dimon, the head of J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, and a few other of the big lead bankers are saying they're prepared for rates going either direction. And that uncertainty you added into the presidential election year has some goofy, uh, goofy turmoil. And that's kind of what we expected um, for this year. So as you add into the presidential election, as you add into um, what's happened over in the Middle East, this uncertainty was kind of, uh, kind of actually to be expected, if that makes any sense, to, to have uncertainty be expected. And it, it's, I was listening, I was out, I think I, we talked about this in December, uh, I was out at um, Fidelity's office and I got to hear, uh, they have a, a researcher who's an old uh, retired CIA agent, and um, we talked about his expectations for the year. And as I was thinking, everything he said that he thought was going to happen with the Israel-Iran crisis and everything, it's come true. It's exactly what he anticipated. Um, and it's weird to say that we are expecting this uncertainty because it's uncertain. You're not supposed to expect uncertainty. Um, but it's exactly what we thought would happen. We didn't know it was going to occur, but we said, hey, these are the things that are out there, and this is what happens in a presidential year. So we can expect that to happen. So... Um, that is kind of where where we uh, where we where we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, going forward, though, what do you do about this? What you do about this is you stay calm. This is what we've you know this uncertainty and this volatility. This is why you hire an advisor. Now, what has this done? Um, a with these rates a little bit higher, it's allowed people to lock in longer term um, guaranteed income, which has now more than ever, people are seeing the benefits of guaranteed income inside of their retirement and take these high rates and use them to your advantage. Um, but also this is expected. Um, I expect volatility to continue to be here through the presidential election. And when we talk about you know all the things going on, as long as you're not having to spend that money, it may hurt to see your, your markets go up and down, but long-term, this is normal. Uh, what you see here on the screen, this is presidential elections back from 2026. And the orange is Republican presidents, the yellow is Democratic presidents. The whole purpose of this is to say, it doesn't matter who's in office. The, our economy tends to trend upwards. Now, this doesn't matter um, if uh, you know if you're if you're spending that money, it doesn't feel good to see ups and downs. But this more than ever is where the value of an advisor that you can trust that can uh, make sure that you're not making emotional, rational decisions is um, is truly where the benefit comes into play right now. You mean like talking to somebody like me? Um, if you can make them stay calm, that is fantastic. I, I so could. well. I did. I did forget that Michael ordered some CBD in my coffee, so I'm very calm right now. So maybe we could maybe we could implement that in our uh, in our handing guests coffee. Uh, I don't think we will. That's no? probably, okay. yeah. No. That's 
probably not going to happen. <laughs> Come in the office, go ahead, drink the coffee. It'll be fine. <laughs> Sorry, compliance. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but no, it, it was it was kind of crazy to be gone for a week and to see, um, you know, after the first quarter we had to see the market doing what it's doing. But with everything going on, I it was fully anticipated and expected to see the volatility. And long term, I'm not, you know, we are not worried about this at all. But now is the time more than ever where um, if you are nervous, let's get together. Let's talk about it. Our office, you know, loves talking to people through this. Um, but this should not have a major impact on anyone's long-term performance here. And if, I mean, if you would like to come in and get a photo with Josh and I next to this, <laughs> next to this poster, we'd be happy to do it. That was taken in downtown Elmhurst last summer. They had this, uh, this rainbow sky art exhibit, and they just opened it up again this year. Oh, so cool. um, if you come in and visit us in downtown Elmhurst, there is uh, this little alleyway, and they're beautiful. It's really cool. Those especially. are umbrellas. Those There's, are umbrellas, yeah. a yeah. bunch of umbrellas that, yeah. It's really, really cool. neat. So, awesome. Um, but yeah, I told you a little bit shorter this year. This this month didn't yeah. go into as much depth, um, but there's a lot there's a lot out there right now. Um, and do expect next month we'll be able to dig a lot deeper into uh, into these topics here. Yeah, for sure. I don't have that wonderful uh, YouTube still of you with your mouth oh, open that God. you hate from October. Uh, but if you're watching, please just click that like button and subscribe button. The like button especially. Uh, YouTube's like, oh, people like what Josh has to say. Let's share that with more people on Google who are, you know, looking for the same information. You really want more people to listen to me, too. I do, yeah. I like when people listen to you. I love listening to you. So, uh, like, subscribe, love it. And um, you're probably already on our email list if you're watching this. So, um, thank you for doing that. Share with your friends. Sharing is caring. Um, Josh, we have nobody pre-submitted questions. Actually, let me check my email before... This is your computer, so I can't check that. Um, <laughs> no live questions have come in. Um, let me check my computer right here. If you want to keep talking for a second, um, well, that's okay. We, this was a, a shortened uh, a shortened time here, so we're, we kind of have a question free month on this. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do expect as the volatility increases here, we will get questions as to what's happening. But uh, again, this is this is normal. This is what we expect and. Um, this is your retirement. This is the best, uh, the best part of your life here. So, if you are, uh, if you were a podcast listener, um, you may be used to hearing that the, the Dave relates to retirees, and so we're not doing that right now. But we have the, the Dave summarizes Java with Josh. This is an easy summary, even for me. Yeah, yeah, it's really because it was so, so short and have to retain that much information. But uh, you've been talking about market volatility for quite some time, my friend, and it's yeah, here. Yeah. It's here. So now. Don't be stupid. <laughs> stay, stay calm, right? Follow the plan, and all will be good. How was that? I like when you listen to me. I know. I still haven't read that book you want me to read. You will. Though. Okay. Yeah, yeah I will. you will. I sure will. Um, again, hit that like button. We appreciate everything. Um, oh, wait. Is this a pre-submitted one? Or is no, this? I think oh, this one that, was, yeah. that was the last one. Okay. Excellent. Is that it? That was it. Short and sweet. Hey, guess what? It didn't cut out the whole time. Uh, We're here. I know. We're live. Use your computer. That's why, again, next show is May 15th. Um, mark your calendars. And um, any parting words of wisdom? It's good to be back. It's good to be, it's good to, uh, be back in the office. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing and talking to, to all of you coming up here. Yep. So Happy job with Josh, folks. Cheers. Bye. Bye.